Hi, very good morning to all of you. So today we are going to understand the AC analysis in detail. So the first step is to understand the step which will be required to uh, perform the AC analysis. So the first step will be you will have to uh, reduce all the DC sources to zero. It means that the DC voltage sources will be shorted and the DC current sources will be opened. It means that you will have to completely eliminate all the DC sources from your circuit. So then coming to the capacitor because you know that you are going to perform the AC analysis and this capacitor will be providing a least impedance path to the AC signals whereas it provides a very high impedance path to the DC signal but uh, uh, for the AC analysis this capacitor will be acting as a short circuit it means that you will have to eliminate all the DC sources and you will have to short circuit all the capacitor so in that case how you are um, how your circuit will look like we'll just see now so now you will be having this circuit this is the circuit of the common emitter amplifier and that to in we are providing a voltage divider pricing circuit so now this you can see here you are having this circuit so the first step will be what you will have to eliminate the dc sources so when you are eliminating the dc sources it means that you will have to replace this voltage source by its internal resistance and what is the internal resistance of this voltage source it will be zero only it means that the ground voltage that is zero volt you will have to provide it means that the zero voltage will come here and zero voltage will come here this R1 and R2 will be in parallel and uh, this RC will in parallel with the R. Now why it is parallel? There is a capacitor but we will have to short this capacitor. So this end and this end potential will be same. So again you will have to short this coupling capacitor and then we will short this bypass capacitor. So now you can see here all the capacitors are shorted and this voltage sources are removed. There is no current source, uh, so we have not opened in the current source here. So this R1 will come in parallel with the R2 and this RC will come in parallel with the RL. So this is the um, modified version of uh, the common emitter amplifier for the AC analysis. So now you can see here these two resistances they are in parallel and RC will be in parallel with the RL. So in that case so you can have the new AC load. So what is the new AC load? Because you can see here RC is coming parallel with the RL. So we can say RAC will be equals to RC parallel to R1. So this is the new AC load which is created after doing the AC analysis. So now you have already studied that the transistor can also be represented by a two port network because in the previous classes I have told you that transistor can be realized as a two port network but we are having only three terminals of a transistor. So in that case you will have to make one terminal as common. So we were having common emitter, common base and the common collector configuration. So it means that this uh, transistor can be realized. Uh, by a two port network also now I think you might be having some idea about two port network two port network means what there will be one input port and there will be one output port so now if I want to you know replace this transistor by a two port so how to uh, do that uh, 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 that realization so you can see here this R1 and R2 they are in parallel so we can have one equivalent resistance of it so that will be R equivalent and similarly you can write uh, a resistance for this RC parallel to RC that is RAC so now this is the most improved or you can say a modified version of the common emitter amplifier for the AC analysis so now this will be uh, you can see here everything will be in small case that is lower case because you are doing the AC analysis so you can see here input voltage we have applied so then this REQ is it is a parallel combination of R1 and R2 then you are having the base current that is also small then you are having the base emitter voltage this is also a small signal then you are having the collector current this is also a small signal and then the IL 
because now your IL is flowing through the improved load resistance that is the AC load. So in this case, what will be your AV? AV will be equal to V0 upon VI. So now you will have to replace this uh, transistor by a two port. And you will have to replace this transistor by a two port. So uh, you can see here the voltage is remaining same. Fine. Then R equivalent is also same. Now this is the input voltage because you know that in case of a transistor, IB is your input current. This is your input current. Then VBE uh, is your input voltage. Fine. VBE will be your input voltage. So you can represent this IB by small i1 and this one will be small v1. Now similarly, this IC, IC means what output current. So output current will be I2 that is IC in this case. And what about the voltage? So voltage will be uh, plus minus small VCE. So that is your V2. V2 will be equal to VCE or you can write the output also because you can see here this VCE is from this point to this point and this is the same voltage which is appearing across RAC. It means that uh, you can also write VCE as the V0. So what we have done? We have just replaced our transistor and uh, uh, we have uh, fitted the two port network there. Now you can see here what is a two port network. If I want to draw a two port network for you, okay, let me draw a two port network. So this is a two port network. This is the input port and the output port. Now what is entering into a two port network? So you can see here current is entering into a two port network. Now this will be your V1, this will be your V1 and similarly you can see here this will be V2 and uh, the current which is entering from the load side uh, that is I2. So you can simply uh, have this uh, two port network. So now here you will have to replace this two port network by a transistor or you can say you have to replace a transistor by a two port network. This is one and the same thing. Fine. So now uh, you are very much familiar with all these variables that is the AC uh, variables you can say this is I1, V1, I2 and V2. Fine. The current uh, convention, please, the current directions, you will have to uh, carefully look because otherwise what will happen, you will be getting some negative value in your answer and you, are, and you will might uh, face a problem in calculating the different parameters for the transistor. So now you can see here, we have replaced this transistor by a two port network. You are having IB, this is VBE, this is IC, this is uh, VCE. Fine. So now uh, for this, uh, what is the effective resistance you will have to calculate? This is the input port. So you will be calculating the input resistance. Fine. This is the actual input resistance. Fine. That is the inter. That is the internal input impedance. Also, you can say. Now similarly, you can also say this is the output impedance. But this is not the external output impedance because when you will have to take the external output impedance and that will be coming after your two port. This is the two port. So for two port for a transistor, you will be having some input resistance and the output resistance. But when you are going to take the you know uh, external resistances, so in that case, Ri dash will be equal to Req parallel with the Ri. Now similarly for this external output impedance. So now what is the voltage gain? Now what is the voltage gain for a two port network? So when you are considering this uh, voltage gain only for a two port network, so it will be what? It will be simple. It will be simple V2 upon V1. This voltage we are fading and this voltage we are obtaining from the port. But when you are considering the entire system, then you will have to consider the overall voltage gain. And what is the overall voltage gain? This is for the overall that is AVS the entire system that is AVS. So in that case, you will have to take the extreme values, the extreme output voltage and the extreme input voltage. So that will be V0 upon Vs. So now I think you are very much familiar with all these parameters now. 
This is the internal voltage gain that will be V2 upon V1 and the overall voltage gain will be V0 upon Vs. So now we will be studying the hybrid or the edge parameter. So basically there were uh, four or five important uh, parameters, the Z parameter and the Y parameter that is the impedance and the admittance parameter were applicable only to the vacuum tubes. But after the invention of the transistor, if you have to replace that transistor by the two port network, then hybrid parameter came into a picture. It is a combination of both that is the impedance and the admittance parameter. This you are going to understand in the uh, network analysis. This H parameters are applicable for any two port network. So right now what you have done, you have taken only the internal circuitry. You have not taken the external resistance into account. Now what what was the external resistance that will be R equivalent, R equivalent was there, then you were having the source voltage because you have applied some input voltage and every other input voltage will be having the internal resistance also. So that is also going to uh, come into a picture. It means that this will be Vs. Then similarly on the output side also there were some external resistances. But uh, now we are focusing only on the two port network because we want to write some equivalent equations for it because if you have to replace the transistor by a two port network then it will be represented by two important equations so now you can see here there were there are four important variables the first one will be your v1 then second one will be your i1 then third one v2 and the i2 so we were having v1 i1 v2 i2 total current and total voltages so now out of this four variables two variables will be independent and two variables will be dependent now which are the uh, dependent variable and which will be independent now you can see here we will always write uh, the equations in terms of the voltage v1 and current i2 so v1 will be a function of uh, i1 and v2 because we are going to write uh, the uh, v1 in terms of this uh, variables now similarly i2 can be written it is a function of i1 and the v2 so if you are writing the expression in terms of the variables it means that these two variables are the dependent variables and this i1 and v2 they are independent variables so now we will try to understand the uh, dependency and the independent independency now Okay, wait for a minute. So now you can see here this V1 is a function of I1 and V2 and similarly I2 is a function of I1 and V2. Fine. So now what we are doing in the AC analysis, we are applying the AC input signal and that AC signal will be superimposed on the DC. So ultimately this V1, I2, I1, V2, I2 is a complete mixture of AC and the DC signals. DC means what? This is the operating point. So on the operating point, we are impressing the AC signal. Fine. So now when you are impressing the AC signal and you know that uh, the AC signal will be having certain variations. It will go, it will increase, it will rise, it will rise, again it will come down. You can see here if you are having a DC operating point and if you are impressing the AC over it, uh, so it is going to, so every uh, instant the value is changing. So there is a variation and that change you will have to write in terms of uh, the dependent variables. So what we have seen the change in the v1 because just now you have uh, seen that this v1 i1 v2 i2 is a mixture of ac and dc signal so when you were doing the dc analysis this v1 i1 v2 i2 was a constant fine but now when you are have impressed the ac signal so there might be a some change and that change will be t v1 but now you can see here two variables are independent it means that you will have to do the partial differentiation. So partial differentiation means what? Del V1 upon del I1 into di1 then plus del V1 upon del V2 into dV2. This is our first equation. 
Just now I have told you that transistor can be replaced by two equations, two hybrid equations. So now this uh, the change in the current is also expressed in terms of the I1 and the V2. So a partial differentiation is taken with respect to I1 first and with respect to V2. Now what does this mean? V1 upon I1, V1 upon V2. This V1 upon I1 means what? Voltage and current. So V upon I is there. So what is this? V upon I means what? This is a resistance. This you can say impedance also. This, you can, this is a resistance. So that will be, this will be impedance. So you can represent this by HI or uh, this is H11 also because this is the first parameter. That will be H11. Now, the second one will be, you can see here V1 upon V2. You are taking the ratio of the voltage, but you have not taken the ratio of the forward voltages. So, in this case, it will be V1 upon V2. It means what? The reverse voltage is there. The reverse voltage. This is a reverse voltage. So, that will be represented by HR. Right? This is the first parameter. This is the first parameter. This is the first parameter. So this is the second parameter. Now you can see here the current gain. Again, the ratio of currents that is the forward current gain. Uh, I2 upon I1, then I2 upon V2. So now you have taken the inverse of the impedance that is the, uh, you can say the output admittance. So here this will be HI, this will be forward uh, current gain and this will be output impedance. So you can replace this uh, partial fraction by this parameters. This is also HI will be what? H11. This will be H12 because this is the first equation, there are two parameters, so H11 and the H12. Now similarly, the sec for second equation, it is H21 and H22. Second equation, the first parameter and second parameter. So either you can write H11, H12, H21 and H22 or you can write HI, HR, HF and HO. Now this analysis is common, is applicable to all. That is the common base configuration, common emitter configuration and common collector configuration. Only thing what you will have to uh, replace, you will have to replace this HI by HIB. For common base it will be HIB, for common emitter it will be HIE. So this is a, a brief introduction about uh, the hybrid parameters. So now we'll be do we'll be writing some equations for it. So just a minute. So this we can. So this I think we have written just now. We have replaced this. Uh, uh, del V1 upon del I1 by H11. This will be H12, H21 and H22. Now just now say that it is applicable for any configuration of the transistor. So you can see here. Now how it is possible when you are taking V1 upon I1. Now H1, H11 will be equals to what? If you want to write the, um, if you want to determine the value of H11. So in that case, this term should be equal to zero. Now this is the parameter. This cannot be zero. H11, H12, H21 and H22 cannot be zero. So it means that if you want this term to be zero, then you will have to make V2 equal to zero. Now this is the condition which you are imposing on this equation. So in that case, H11 will be calculated with, uh, as a uh, V1 upon I1 provided you should have short circuited your uh, output port. Only then you will be able to find H11 otherwise not. So this H11, H12, H21 and H22 can also be uh, called as the conditional parameters. Because we are able to determine the H11, H12, H21 and H22 uh, by imposing some condition. So if you want to calculate H12, how you are going to calculate? So in that case, your first term should be 0. So when your first term will be 0, H12 will be equals to V1 upon V2. You can see here, you can now easily uh, calculating the parameter. But... Uh, having the condition and condition will be what i1 will be equal to 0 now i1 will be equal to 0 means what your input port is open circuited you have not applied any voltage 
that will be open circuited now similarly you can calculate h21 now for h21 it will be i2 upon i1 but make this term 0 this cannot be 0 so v2 will be equals to 0 and h22 will be equals to i2 upon v2 this is the output impedance parameter and this will be i1 will be equal to 0 so in this way you can easily determine the h1 h parameters and this parameter can now uh, be termed as the conditional parameters so now we will try to understand this uh, uh, this thing in the form of equation now. So uh, now we will try to replace this entire H11 by H11, H12, H21 and H21 by their uh, impedance reverse forward and the output parameter. So you can see here uh, this H11 will be equals to what V1 upon I1. It means that you are calculating the impedance. Ultimately, this H11 will be acting as the impedance only. So when it is acting as the impedance, you see here H1 V1 upon I1 that will be HI. And here this is the dimension because you have you are taking the ratio of the currents. So when you are taking the ratio of the current, it will be forward current because you are uh, calculating the forward uh, that output current first and then you have calculating calculated the input current and then you have taken the ratio of it so that will be forward current gain so fine so now this will be uh, represented by hf this can also be represented by these things then this will be hr because you have taken the reverse voltage now this will be output admittance this will be ho so that uh, v1 will be equals to so initially it was V1 will be equals to H11 I1 plus H12 V2. Uh, we have started that with the function of I1 and V2. So we have represented this V1 in terms of I1 and V2. So now I2 will be equals to what? Uh, this will be H21 into I1 plus H22 into V2. So now you can replace H11 because it is similar to your impedance parameter. This is forward gain parameter, reverse gain parameter, output gain parameter. So what we have done here? We have replaced all the H11, H12, H21 and H22 by IRFO fine so this is these are called the hybrid parameter and for uh, common emitter configuration now suppose if you are if i want to write uh, the parameters for the common emitter so what i have to do just you will have to replace this hi by hie hf by hfe hr by hre and ho by hoe so in this way you can do uh, you can write the h parameters for the common emitter configuration or similarly you can write for the common base also and what about the common collector configuration in that case it will be hic then hfc then hrc and the hoc fine so now we have written this equation this is the h parameter equivalent circuit and this uh, h parameters are applicable to a two port network so we have written two equation if you if we want to write uh, this equation in terms of the matrix form that also you can write that is v1 and i2 it will be h11 h12 h21 and h22 that will be i1 and v2 now if i want to draw the equivalent circuit for this if i want to draw the model for this and how to draw that model so just actually just have a look here so now you can see this one will be v1 so we'll try to understand the equation number three first so this will be your voltage that is plus v1 so now you can see here the current i1 now this is the impedance this is the impedance this hi means what impedance i for i stands for impedance it means what so there will be an impedance so you can directly draw because hi into i1 uh, first there is a voltage rise and then there is a voltage drop it means that uh, this will be hi so now how to represent this in uh, this model now you can see here r means what hr that is hr means what it is the ratio of the voltages fine so it is a dimensionless 
This HR is dimension. It is not having any dimension, not having any SI unit because we have taken the ratio of the voltages and that to a reverse voltage. So this HR is a dimensionless quantity. This HI was having a dimension. It was having a dimensions of ohms because HI means what V1 upon I1 when V2 will be equal to 0. It means it will be it was having the uh, dimensions of the ohm so that hi i have represented it by the impedance now this hr is dimensionless it means that this entire term will be acting as a voltage source this entire thing will be acting as a voltage source but you can see here v2 is linked it means that it will be a dependent voltage source or you can say a controlled voltage source so now this will be represented by a controlled voltage source that will be hr into v2 so this will be our first equation so we have written the equation for the input port now you can see here this is a transistor and transistor in the transistor the input port and the output port they are interlinked they are not separated like a transformer so now you can see here and now here we have written we have applied the kvl now for this because you can see here the current is in the R in the LHS and the two currents are in the um, are in the RHS. So here you will have to apply the Kirchhoff current law. For first equation you apply you have applied the KVL and for second equation you will have to apply the KCL. So now this is the main current this uh, this is you can say it is the sum of the entering current and these are the outgoing current it means that these two currents are leaving okay so now if i uh, write this as the v2 this one will be v2 so now from the v2 the current i2 has started so now it will be split it into two parts. Now, now you can see here uh, which quantity is dimensionless and which quantity will be having certain SI unit. So now you can see here HF I2 upon I1 by making V2 as 0 that is short circuited. So this uh, HF is for forward current gain and uh, from here you can see HF will be equals to what I2 upon I1 by making V2 as 0. So this is the dimension loss, uh, dimension less quantity current and current. You are taking the ratio of it. So this is a current source, but that to a controlled current source. So we can have the controlled current source and you can see here if this current is entering this should be leaving. So this is all about here. So now the next is what uh, this HO. So what is HO? HO will be equals to I2 upon um, I2 upon V2 by making I1 as 0. So I upon V it is a reciprocal of the impedance. So this will one will be your HO. But if I want to write in terms of the impedance because this is the admittance. This is the admittance. So admittance will be equals to HO. But if I want to write the impedance so it will be equals to what the reciprocal of the admittance and that will one will be equals to 1 upon HO so now this one will be 1 upon HO so this is the model of a transistor means we have realized our transistor as a two-port network